Hello Mr. Mores, hope you're doing great. Today I'm mad because I because I bought this new curl activator that was cheaper than the normal one I used because I was like, you know what, it's new, maybe it's good. I wouldn't mind saving some money on like curl products. Well now I need to spend even more because what do you mean anti-frizz? What do you mean leave the shine? What do you mean define curls? Anyway, you probably won't be able to notice because hopefully you won't be able to see it on camera, but Damn, I'm mad! <laughs> I feel like in Germany, especially well-known brands, they just have no idea how to make curl products and there was probably not a single person with curly textured hair in that room developing that product, testing that product even. Maybe it works in straight haired girlies, but anyway. <laughs> I'm still excited because I'm gonna be making your favorite recipes, which I haven't done in a long, 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 long time and I'm not even sure I've ever really made desserts. But but either way, I'm excited to bring that back. The ones I've chosen are really, really nice, in theory. And I hope I will be able to do them justice so that I can properly judge them. We have a lot of cooling to do and knowing my patience, we should probably get started as soon as possible so that we have enough time for everything to set and cool. Let's start with something that will have to sit in the fridge for hours and hours. So shout out to Esmeralda, because they want me to try a Carlota de Limón, which they say I've probably tried already, but I haven't, which is a crime. Apparently it's a Mexican lemon icebox cake. Icebox, whatever that means. It's a lemon cake situation from Mexico. Which, you know, I love Latin food, Latin culture, language, everything. And I love lemons, so how have I not tried this yet? How have none of you suggested it yet? I'm as much at fault as you are. I'm just saying, if you really love me, you would share them. Oh god. Carlota, you already hear it in the name. It's a Mexican version of the one on Charlotte. And basically it's some sort of layer cake. So we're just gonna mix a filling. We've got cookies and then we're gonna layer cookie, filling, cookie, filling, cookie, filling. And you only need four ingredients. So it's really, it should be really, really easy to make. It just takes long. <laughs> Everyone, take a sip from your secret potion. The other one as well. And then let's get started. Here's what you need. Tell me what you need. 426 milliliters of evaporated milk, one can of sweetened condensed milk, around half a cup of lemon juice or more to taste. Obviously, I'm opting for more. And then about 570 grams of Mexican Maria cookies. Galletas Maria. I had to order them. This is what they look like. Ah, so cute. They kind of look religious. Oh. Oh, yeah, quite tough. Mm, yum. Yeah, I mean, they're similar to our German Leibniz cakes, uh, just that they're tougher and there's more vanilla in these, I think. They have a bit more flavor and they're a little sweeter. But I feel like I could have gone with the cookies that I find in our supermarkets instead of spending way too much money on these ones, <laughs> which are probably super cheap where they're from. But obviously, they're not from here, they're imported. Great song. Oh, by the way, all of these amounts were for half of the recipe. This recipe should be pretty foolproof. In a bowl, you're just gonna whisk together the two types of milk and the lemon juice until, what does it say? The mixture is thick and smooth. Does it become thicker the more I whisk it is the question. See, that's what I was afraid of because like milk and lemon, it now just tastes like the milk has gone bad. <laughs> it doesn't even taste like lemon. I don't know if it's getting thicker, it's just kind of everywhere in this room now, so <laughs> I need it to stop asking me for shit. I guess this is thick enough now because, you yeah, know, nothing's really changing. Now line a glass bowl or trifle dish. I don't have a smaller one than this. This is gonna be too big. Usually, apparently, the Carlota de Limon consists of five layers. Ours will have less layers. I used to like that they're round, but now I kind of hate it because that kind of sucks. Damn, they're really not made for this trifle dish. I think I can just layer them a little. I mean, I could also try and like cut off a corner. I could bite one off actually. <laughs> ah, there you go. That's nicer. And then we can even put that in here. Excelente. Now we're gonna cut, oh, wait. <laughs> we have to cover it with a cream, guys. <laughs> a generous layer of the milk mixture. Oh, I think I can take some off. 
feel like I'm making lasagna. Let's hope we have enough to cover it. We should, we should, we should. Do we end with a layer of cookie? I forgot. Of the milk mixture. Okay, now I'm gonna cover this with probably cling film or so and refrigerate it for at least six hours or best overnight, it says. I mean, I only made half the recipe, so theoretically, three hours should be enough, right? I just feel like I didn't add enough lemon because there's no way the lemon is gonna come through. Quarter to two. We're gonna try it now. It's basically been six hours. This is what it looks like. It doesn't look very pretty. <laughs> I won't mind if it tastes good. Maybe you can just put some lemon zest on top or so. We're just gonna dive in. See, this is set. This is the settest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> look at them layers. It lacks in color. It lacks in presentation. But all we care about right now is the flavor. Cause it's just me. Also, how have I made half of the recipe? And I'm still left with all of this. Cheers guys. Mmm. -hmm. I would not have expected these flavors at all. I can't even explain it. It doesn't taste like lemon. There's like a hint of something sour, but I wouldn't even know it's lemon. Mmm. This tastes very rich, but like in a very homely way. It feels like a hug, you know? <laughs> I would want something, some like fresh fruits with it or so, but I could eat a lot of this. I didn't expect it. I wish I could explain what it tastes like. No, I, it just tastes good. My review sucks. If you want to hug someone but don't want to touch them, make them this. That's all I can say. I hope we continue this video like this. I say as if this wasn't the last thing I've tried today, <laughs> but <laughs> ooh, the power of editing. Second recipe. Well. I wish the power of editing would be powerful enough to not only bring back the proper mic sound, but also bring back, back my... my footage because about 20 minutes of me introducing the next recipe etc is all gone lost without me having deleted it all i've got is the footage of the second camera listing the ingredients and actually making it luckily we've still got voiceover vincent yay just gonna keep it brief because this video is cursed enough as is karen wanted me to make mexican choco flan and so i tried my best to make it i was a little bit scared because the process of making it is so unlike anything i'd ever made before but i was up for the challenge basically mexican choco flan is chocolate cake with a hardened almost jelly like layer of a custard like mixture on top and here's what you need i'm sorry this is 71 grams of unsalted soft and butter in total but i divided it into 14 grams and the rest <laughs> this is half a cup of dulce de leche you can also use cajeta 180 grams of all-purpose flour 35 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder 414 milliliters of sweetened condensed milk 236 milliliters of whole milk 354 milliliters of evaporated milk three large eggs and actually four but i can't find the other one right now 112 grams of cream cheese at room temperature a quarter of a teaspoon of salt a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of distilled white vinegar and one tablespoon of vanilla extract and lastly just some hot water we actually have the extra tablespoon of butter just to grease the bun pan so i guess we're gonna go in <laughs> A lot. I definitely would not have used this much, but okay. Now we pour in the dulce de leche and then we set it aside. By the way, you can also make dulce de leche yourself. Apparently, when I looked it up, I actually have seen a recipe which made me really curious because it just got rid of like the packaging paper from a can of condensed milk and then placed it in hot water for like two hours or so. And apparently then it caramelized on its own. And when you open it, you have dulce de leche. That seems crazy to me. Okay, there we go. Moving on, set that aside. Maybe that is why. I introduce him to okay now in a bowl I forgot sugar <laughs> you also need 150 grams of granulated white sugar beat together the sugar and the remaining butter until it's creamed it's been creamed everyone and of course in a separate bowl mix together the flour the cocoa powder the baking soda and the salt then we add and mix until combined. Could have sifted the cocoa powder, but anyway. Now we add the milk, one egg, and the vinegar. Guess what? The cake batter is done. 
One egg is not a lot, is it? Now, for some reason, the other mixture we're supposed to make in a blender. Whatever you want. Wow, what a great view. Add the evaporated milk, the sweetened condensed milk, the cream cheese, the vanilla extract, and the three remaining eggs. Oh. We blend this on high for 30 seconds. Ah, that's it already, guys. Now, bun cake pan. We pour the cake batter and then spread it evenly. I feel like maybe mine should have been more solid because it's very liquid. Now gently pour the flan mixture over the cake mixture. Apparently it's okay if they mix a little. They will invert during baking anyway, it says. Will they? I feel like they're fully mixed now. I trust, I trust. Now we cover it with aluminum foil. We need a roasting pan, but I don't have a roasting pan. I'm just gonna put it in here because we're gonna need to pour about an inch of hot water. It doesn't have to be boiling. Hot water from the tap is enough in there to create a bain-marie or a water bath. One inch in centimeters, 2.5. We place it in the center rack and then bake it for about one and a half hours or until the surface of the cake is firm to the touch and toothpick inserted into the cake comes out clean. And afterwards, we're gonna have to let it cool for about an hour to room temperature. <laughs> I'm nervous. Everything is working in my favor. Everything will turn out great. The universe wants me to drink coffee. Hello. I hope you don't have to pee because you can hear the dishwasher in the background because it lied to me. I put it on for one hour and it's like honestly, it's almost been two. <laughs> what else has lied to me? This bitch because it's still not room temperature and it's almost been two hours. I've been patient enough, I think. I was wondering something. I was wondering maybe could I make you my baby and we do the unthinkable. According to the recipe, I have to take a sharp knife, go along the edge just slightly. If all else fails, I wouldn't mind eating it out of this. Now we jiggle. Then get a plate. <laughs> ah, it definitely came out. It came out. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. Now why isn't this white? I told you it mixed too much. There's still dulce de leche on the bottom, which we're gonna scrape out now. And then we can also put some nuts on top. We can dive in. We can eat it now. Mmm, softy. Ah, we've got layers, honey. Look at them layers. I mean, it's not really white. It looks so rich in person. And look, it jiggles. I'm gonna try both layers together first. Yummy. Mmm, wow, very moist. Now just the cake. Mm-hmm. I wish it was richer in flavor. I think it lacks a little bit of chocolate flavor. There's not enough cocoa in there, I think. Now the flan with the dulce de leche. Very sweet, but pretty nice. To me, there's always something about evaporated milk and condensed milk that kind of tastes a little bit spoiled, except for in Tres Leches cake. Damn, this is really good. I wouldn't mind another flavor component, but I don't know if it's nuts. I think just in general, this Joco Flan is really good and nice and like sweet. I feel like I would have loved this as a kid because it doesn't really have a lot of flavor dimension. It's just very sweet, but like the textures are nice. Oh, look, nothing. <laughs> ever happened here. Thank you so much for suggesting that. I can definitely see how this would be your favorite, especially probably with your family's recipe or so. It's nice for me. I'm not obsessed. Let's move on to the last recipe. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. I'm probably gonna cut it a little differently, but can you believe that we are on recipe number three and I have yet to try a single thing? I just think that's homophobic, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. The oven is still on. Luckily, we're gonna need the same temperature to make what Julia wants us to make. Make Russian tea cakes. They are so delicious. 
I don't know, I feel like I've definitely done something similar. They're really easy, so I'm excited. They're little walnut cookies, basically. I hope none of you is allergic to walnuts, because that would be sad. Here's what you need. 115 grams of unsalted butter, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, 120 grams of all-purpose flour, 23 grams of powdered sugar, 75 grams of finely chopped walnuts, I hope that's finely enough, and then more powdered sugar to cover them in the end. That's it already, guys. So let's get started so they can go into the oven right away. Take a bowl and cream together the butter and the vanilla extract. Toll gemacht. Well done. Separate bowl. Whisk together the flour and the powdered sugar. And add it to the butter mixture until just combined. Add the walnuts and mix until incorporated. Mixture may be crumbly. Girl, this is anything but crumbly. What do you mean? Should I add a little bit more walnuts? Well, I knew that it wouldn't change a thing. Now you take little scoops of the dough and roll it between your hands into one inch balls. And then place them two inches apart. Yeah, it's still way too soft. I don't know why. All right, now bake them in the preheated oven until the edges are just turning golden for about 12 minutes. I'll see you then, guys. The tea cakes are done. Not gonna lie, they were probably in the oven for about 20 minutes maybe even a bit longer. At some point I even doubted that they become golden or cooked at all because I realized I still have the choco flan in the oven and obviously there's a lot of steam in there which probably doesn't agree with the tea cakes that well but that was only in hindsight. I then put them on the topmost rack. Look, they are kind of golden. So everything is good, everything is well. This happened when I slid them onto the wire rack from the other rack. Now we can cover them in powdered sugar. Woohoo! Yeah, not gonna lie, they're still a bit crumbly. <laughs> um, ooh, this was meant to be a half one anyway. They would be too sweet for me anyway, so... Okay, here are our Russian tea cakes. I don't know if they're actually Russian, but... I mean, they look very cute. I already know what to expect now. I don't know what the issue was. Maybe the steaming. Cheers. Well, that's basically like sand. <laughs> sand that melts in your mouth. But not in a super dry way, but in a super nice way. These would never be my favorite dessert or favorite snack or so, but I can see why someone would say that. And also, I'd be happy to see them everywhere and I would eat them everywhere. Mainly because of the texture. Well done! Thank you so much! Maybe bake them in an oven where you don't currently I have a Bain Marie going on. Um, I still love my feast. I just had to check with people that I can give this to because I don't want to eat all of this. <laughs> Guys, that's it. Everything was really good. One thing I do still want to say is that I hope no one ever lies to you the way this dishwasher lied to me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Y entonces nos vemos la próxima. Adiós.